Uh oh. Should have double blocked me. Well, I think this Rakdos player has just learned an important life lesson. Double block the Tramplers, guys. Welcome back, everybody, to the show. I am your host, as always, J Villain, aka That Villain J. And tonight, we have a supreme and sublime very special treat for you. What is it? It is Boros. Um, you know, Boros is, uh, kind of fell off after Winota let herself go and get kicked into his dork. Um, used to be a proud and noble tradition of Boros, but nobody's really doing it anymore. Um, so I said, well, let's bring Boros back. I can run kind of a Boros, a little bit of anti-meta tricks that I learned from my other decks in there. A little bit of burn, a little bit of angels, a little bit of everything. Um, a little clerics, a little double strike, you know, fun stuff. So we're going to do Burning Star 4 here. Um, good Apollo on Burning Star 4. Please leave a comment if you get that reference. Um, but before we do that, I need you to do something for me. Do you know what that is? Tenderly press that like button gently press that subscribe button don't smash it just be easy or else the like and subscribe will come and maul you with his brutal blood-stained werewolf claws join us every night at twitch.tv slash that for all the live streaming goodness we would love to have you there we'd be so happy and so excited if you were there um uh we get first stream shout out to who is here first of all sometime? Hypothesis GG. Welcome first stream. Shout out to him. And of course, you can check out our Discord community for all the latest news and information. Um, and uh, this deck and all the others are available down below on my Aether Hub. So let's get down to the meat and potatoes. Oh, chat almost built a pyramid. Chat almost built a pyramid. Okay, you could be in that too if you were here. Curse of Silence. Curse of Silence is a great anti meta, guys. Um, pretty much at this point you can know what cards they're going to play um curse of silence if you know they're playing uh is it you know they're going to play expressive reiteration you know they're going to play fading hope you know they're going to play alrun's epiphany you know they're going to play smoldering egg make it harder for them slow them down curse of silence is something i used in my death and taxes if you haven't seen that one very 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 good deck uh early card gets it out if you see that they're going to be doing something um hit them with curse of silence you generally know what's in the meta right now and what cards people are playing lunark veteran uh probably one of my great new one drops here we do emphasize a lot of one drops here um and he he is a cleric and he gives you more life well, life is going to be an important thing here um and then of course luminous phantom he comes back and whenever something leaves when he's luminous phantom you gain the life so um you can gain it coming you can gain it going fantastic stuff there uh paladin class paladin class is another subtle anti-meta card uh spells your opponent's cast during your turn cost one more so if they're trying to push stuff back or destroy things on your turn or cast counter spells they are going to be locked out if you think someone's running mono blue or demir or something like that and you think they're going to have tested talents hey hit uh hit curse of signs with tested talents and paladin class right there um and guess what? Test of Talents now costs five if they're casting it on your turn. If they want to rip all your plays with fires off because they want to cast Test of Talents, Paladin, Curse of Silence, boom. No problems there. You're locking out their mana. That is going to be part of the trick that we're going to do to protect our big boys going in later. A little bit of shit, sip of water there. Play with fire. I like the scry. Um, one red mana, two damage. It's the better version of Shock. Unfortunately, Shock is completely outclassed with this card. Fantastic uh, card that you can play uh, for pretty much any red deck. I would slot this into. It's very useful. Dawnbringer Cleric. Um, uh, gain two life, dispel magic, and exile a card. These are all... This is a full sw white Swiss army knife here for an uncommon card. Gaining two life, of course, is always useful. Destroy target enchantment, unbelievably useful. And then General Repose has gotten more and more use lately because if they're doing something like Siphon Insight, if they're doing Disturb decks, if they're doing Memory Deluge, stuff like that, that they're recurring out of their graveyard, get rid of it, man. 
get rid of it. Get rid of use Don bring a cleric. This a little known secret. It's gonna it's gonna really really just just the utility belt of white right here. And that extra toughness is going to come in handy for good blocker there. Faithful Absence, again, if we're just going to run removal, they do get that sacrifice um, for that token. A, a little trick that I like to do with Faithful Absence is if something is going to destroy mine and I have the open mana, I'll destroy my own creature first so I get the uh, clue token and then I can get the extra card out of it. So a little bit of utility out of Faithful Absence as well. Luminarch Aspirant, 1-1 uh, one, one counters on everybody. We want to grow, we want to do it big. Uh, we want to rip things up with extra, extra, extra counters. Um, absolutely, we do. Fantastic card. Um, very much worth the wilds. Uh, pretty much can work in any deck that has white in it. Slesnia, Orzov, whatever. Curses, Shaken Faith. Now, this is another kind of anti bet. I don't think people are using the curses to good enough effect here. Uh, they are really, really can mess with you. So, uh, whenever Enchanted Player casts a spell other than the first spell they cast... Uh, each turn or copies a spell so again anti mage craft um curse of shaken faith deals two damage people aren't expecting this one guys if they're playing a mono white aggro and they're trying to play two three cards a turn they're going to start burning themselves up pretty pretty bad here it's only two to put down and you can put multiple of these down guys you can have two down that means every time they cast a second spell a turn um Every time that they cast a second spell turn, they're taking four damage. Even with Al runes, even if they're going to take another turn, guess what? Uh, every turn that they take, they're going to be more and more and more and more damage. So um, taking multiple turns in a row doesn't really relieve the pressure here. If you're going to keep casting spells, you're going to take the damage. Uh, Thundering Rebuke, just a big damager right there. Um, oh, somebody in the Rogue Maverick just said, three curses, shaken faith, won me a game. Uh, yeah, it, it can. If people aren't paying attention, they'll just they throw cards down. They'll they'll win. Big blast right here, guys. Do I need to explain four damage to target creature or planeswalker, which is very important? Um, you can just blast the planeswalker out of there. Loth, whoever you need to get rid of, uh, four damage. It can't go face on, unlike play with fire. Play with fire can go directly to the player, which is useful where you get your scry from. Um, but thundering rebuke is just direct damage there. Righteous Valkyrie, one of the most powerful uh, angels to come out of. Um, the Kaldheim set. 2-4 flying. Whenever another angel or cleric enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So that's why, guys, if you've seen, you've been watching, you got a keen eye, cleric, cleric, cleric. All right? So anytime any of these clerics hit the board, we're going to be gaining the life. Uh, with Dawnbringer Cleric, we can gain two life and we're going to gain three. So um, with him coming in and then uh with lunark veteran we can on turn three put down uh something big and we can get that plus two plus two into the end of turn because we want seven or more life so dawnbringer cleric is going to help you get there uh lunark veteran is going to help you get there even as luminous phantom if you're losing creatures they're going to help you get there to that plus uh two and remember that stack so if you've got two righteous valkyries and 28 life that's plus four plus four to everybody um that's a lot of power to uh paraphrase phil swift uh and that's why we have all these clerics and remember coming back from the dead lunark veteran is still a cleric he's a human cleric then he's a spirit cleric so you get to double dip on that one um and then we have a spirit cleric i think a venerable war slinger is another underrated card absolutely if he had haste i think uh i think he'd be just op uh, whenever Venerable Warslinger deals combat damage to a player, you return a card, creature card from with a mana value X or less from the graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the amount of damage Venerable Warslinger did to that player. So a 3-3 Vigilance and Trample does not tap when attacking. Um, believe me, when you have, uh, you're going to get the three, you're going to get the three life when Rachel's Valkyrie hits the board. Uh, if this is a 5-5 five, five Trampler, and then you hit it with Luminarch Aspirin, it's a 6-6 six, six Trampler, you're going to be blasting over people. Uh, with that trample and if you've lost any of these guys you've lost luminarchs you've lost even righteous valkyries or lunarchs or dawnbringer clerics you're going to be putting them back on the battlefield like crazy and guess what when dawnbringer play gets to the battlefield and you have that um righteous valkyrie that's three more life and two more life it's just going to start a cycle that's going to be absolutely brutal um spirit cleric and of course it's going to trigger righteous and then we're going to finish it off with a little bit of blade historian here we do have Paladin class. We're kind of splitting the difference between Paladin class and Blade Historian. So Paladin will give everybody plus one, plus one, which is useful on top of Righteous Valkyrie. 
Um, and then, of course, on top five, on uh, level five, whenever you attack until the end of turn, target creature gets plus one for each other attacking creature and double strike. A trampler with double strike is the worst thing you can imagine because the double strike, even if they have a chump blocker, all of it's going through. If they block for three and I've got five double strike going through, they're going to get eight because you're hitting twice. You're going to hit five. They're going to block three. Two is going to go through and then five more. Oh, that's going to be seven, actually. So double strike and trample do stack. Uh, be careful for that. So double striking with Paladin class, double striking with Blade Historian, flexible mana cost here, and he is a cleric, which means that his three toughness will trigger Righteous Valkyrie. One Cave of the Frost Dragons, uh, eight planes, one Den of the Bugbear, eight mountains, four Needle Verge Pathways, mana to taste, whatever you like. If you want to use the Boros ones, you can, no problems there. Uh, 2.0 average, pretty aggressive deck, 22 lands total. We have our lovely Boros backs on there, leaning a little bit heavier towards white, but we don't really have any double white costs, so I'm, I'm fine splitting it down the middle. 21 creatures, 21 clerics total. Everything in here is a cleric. Uh, this is a sneaky cleric deck, 4 angels, 4 spirits, 13 humans, 6 instants, 4 sorceries, 8 enchantments, 22 lands total. Uh, we look at the mana spread on this one is pretty reasonable. The only 4 drop we have is here. We're moving pretty quickly. Um, we're moving pretty quick. Blade Historians are only triple of, I mean, a quadruple mana cost here, four, but it is very flexible, so we're not locked out. Um, in case you do get a problem where you draw four lands in a row, or uh, four planes in a row, four mountains in a row. And then, of course, Lunark Veteran um, is, a double, is a double card, basically an extra creature on there. And uh, additionally, um... Uh, Paladin class will grow with the mana as we do. So on three, we can get plus one to everybody, which is really going to help the amount of power that we're throwing at them here. Doing pretty good, holding its own in standard right now, in standard platinum, which is if you play platinum, you know it's a freaking mess right now out there with Essica and Mono White Aggro and Al Ruins, but actually, absolutely holding our own. So we're going to get into it and we are going to rip it up. Here we go, guys. Was there talk of a Wild West set? Yes, there was, and it was me talking. Um, it was me talking about the Wild West set. That's what I want, and I was making Wild West cards on the Discord with a couple other guys. I fell off a little bit, but I still enjoy it a lot. Um, Shadowrun set, that's basically going to be Kamigawa, um, the Shadowrun set. I know what you're thinking. Oh, Wild West, that's stupid. Um, it's not what you think. Uh, party? Black. Arch Priest of Iona. Uh, okay. Let's do this. No, he's using a black version. He's using a, Okay, he's doing Esper Party. Hey, good for him, man. You always got to go after Lunvala first. There you go. You gotta pop the Linvala. Everyone tries to go after something else and the Linvala gets popped, but you just need her off the board, man. Oh! Okay. Every color. Every color. It's a Jew or Paragon. Okay. Uh, he's gonna swing, swing. That guy didn't redeem any dark power. Um, yeah, a little bit of steampunk Wild West. 
um, I didn't really think that that was more that the if you're talking about Aether Revolt being steampunk, um, I don't really think it was. It was more. What's that one called? That it's not steampunk. It's called. Uh, they call it something different. Um, Will Smith and Giant Spider. Yeah, that was called Wild Wild West. We're we're trying to get away from that, man. I'm talking about more the Dark Tower. If you've ever seen the Dark Tower, that's what that's what we need. Um, all right, let's get double strike on this guy plus four. Stephen King lives the next street over from me. Oh my god. I love Stephen King, man. That is oh, one of my favorite authors. Absolutely one of my favorite authors. Uh, the Dark Tower series was freaking amazing. Life, life. Not the best works of Will Smith. NCP. I'm talking about... Dark Tower movie was not very good, no. Dark Tower movie was not very good. Linvala, there we go. And what do we? What did we teach you kids? What do you got to do to Linvala? Pop the Linvala. Yes, that's right. Pop the Linvala. You're getting it. He needs a blue to do that. That's not. That's not. There we go. Um, we're going to gain two life. Give him double strike. Get him for the four damage right there. Pop. Pop. There you go. But yeah, kind of a, a decayed, post-apocalyptic um, uh, Dark Tower type thing. I'd love that, you know. You got a lot of mythology already in the Wild West. And I don't think people realize how fantasy-based the Wild West is. I, I really don't think people appreciate it. Um, so he's going to go in. Uh, the world has moved on, yeah. Um, so he's pretty much screwed at this point. That's what we call the old screw. Decayed technology and Rekiones. Rekiones out of there. You know, we're talking decayed technology. We're talking, um, uh, we're talking monsters. We're talking spirits. You got to think about that. You talk about why, uh, you're talking about Wendigos, Skinwalkers, um, Pico's Bill ropes a tornado and rides it. Um, Paul Bunyan is a giant, literally a giant. Um, he has a giant blue ox. You know, all those tall tales things. John Henry outpounding the machine, the strongest man. He could outbeat a machine. You know, iron swinging, trains. There's a lot of mythology to, uh, to, to Wild West. Exactly, exactly. I made a lot of cards. I made a lot of cards for it. You talk about, you know, town preachers and demonic possessions and um, stuff like that and curses, cursed gold and there's a there's a lot of stuff, man. There's a lot of stuff you can you can do a lot of fun stuff with Wild West. Did I ever play Deadlands? No, unfortunately, I never played Deadlands or Boot Hill. I was never able to muster it up. Johnny Appleseed, exactly. That's a druid right there. Yeah, that's a druid card. 
creates food tokens, whatever. Um, there's a lot of legends, there's a lot of mythology, more than just cowboys and six shooters, you know? Exactly. He, he turns, uh, he turns stuff into, um, he, he turns stuff into things. So, let's do Curse of Silence. Um, let's do Code. on that one. Lost Dutchman is super. Yeah, uh, let's talk about more stuff. Let's talk about the Donner Party becoming cannibals. Let's talk about, you know, the Searchers. Let's talk about, um, uh, you know, let's talk about all this stuff, man. You know, there's a lot of mythology out there, man. There's a lot of mythology out there. Let's talk about cursed guns that, you know, force people to, to kill. Um, oof. Yeah. Take action. Draw a card. It's going to be a mana. Saint of Killers, yeah, that's uh, that was a good. Uh, he's a cool guy. Saint of Killers, so let's do Lunar Veteran. Let's do this guy. Hmm. We're kind of lined up for battle here. need a destruction card and that's not a destruction card that is not a destruction card ladies and gentlemen that is not what we needed This would have been great if I drew Curse of uh, Curse of Doubt, and every time he drew a cost the second spell, did two damage to him. That'd have been really fantastic. Um, Headless Canyon in Alaska. Sure. There's a there's a there's a very 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 rich history of mythology out west, um, <clears throat> and it's 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 a more modern mythology, um, but it's mythology nonetheless. And I think that it's a rich vein to tap, as opposed to oh, knights, swords. Uh, as a bad guy, he's a monster, and, uh, this guy's a good guy, he's got a, he's good, you know, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of getting recursive at this point with the, uh, uh, the fantasy tropes, you know, you've kind of got to shake it up, um, at least in my opinion, maybe I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but. That's my two cents, guys, and I'm about to get smashed here. 
I did not draw a Curse of Doubt, which probably would have killed him, or Curse of Shaken Faith, which probably would have annihilated that guy. Um, future Western stuff. Yeah. Oh, that, that's a little bit too far for me. You're talking more like Space Western. Yeah. Thirty-one viewers. I think is it broke through a record here. Uh, Hypothesis GG. Who else is here? Um, Buzzard bait. I see you. Wade bugs. Brave star. Blackheart Trey. I see Blackheart Trey. Azurity prime time. Watership down theme post hardcore album trilogy. Wow. Okay, that was certainly a collection of words. Um. You certainly said some words there, sir. And they certainly were in an order. Uh, so let's do play with fire. Chocobo. We're gonna fight an actual chocobo here. Target a player. We want. Uh, what are you always? What are you always running with this? You're always running deadly dispute. Curse of silence for you. Deadly dispute. And a swing. Pop. There we go. Um. Yeah, he's gonna try to hit Deadly Dispute, and I'm gonna. It's more expensive, isn't it? Yeah. I already know you got a Deadly Dispute, my guy. Um, there's a Grim Wanderer. Ooh, Grim Wanderer. You know, I've been thinking about using him again, too. Um, uh, Jadar. Hmm. What other Curse of Silence thing do we want? Well, let's do Grim Wanderer then. Maybe he's got another one. Meat Hook. Meat Hook would have been a good idea. Sorry. Yeah, I messed that up. Vengeful Strangler. Okay. Okay. Grim Wanderer. Uh, okay. I'll take it. Attacks. What's the one sacrifice? The one that costs sacrifice that gets two cards? Yeah, I already did that one. It's called, um... It's called Deadly Dispute. Village rights as well. Ooh, Professor Onyx. Okay. Um, each opponent sacrifice. Lose one life. And thingy. Um, village rights or, yeah. And he's out of there. Chocobo. I don't know some about it. Chocobo didn't like what we had uh, what we had going on there. All right. Actually, two wins in, in ranked. I'm kind of surprised. Not that I don't have confidence in my deck, but this is kind of set up to get rid of Al runes because... It's kind of there for multiple spell casting, and we haven't run into one of those decks, and we've had some decent success, so I'm pretty happy with the performance so far. Um, let's keep it going. <clears throat> I have a feeling everybody just wants me to run Mono Black or Rakdos or Orzhov forever. Um... That's that's basically the feeling that I get. Um, I, I I feel like I want to do that so bad, and that, <laughs> but it's enabling my worst 
uh, it's enabling my worst, uh, whatchamacallit, my worst impulses. See? And that's the thing. My channel won't grow if I run nothing but black decks. Um, like, if I just did a, a, a rotating, if I just went mono black, Demir, Golgari, Orzov, Rakdos, mono black, Demir, Golgari, <laughs> like, everybody would just be happy. Um... But I feel like my core audience would be happy. I'd never branch out for people looking for other decks. So I try to mix it up. Because if it was up to me, that's basically what I would do. And I think probably the next time that uh, when Watchmacall comes out, I'm going to be doing it. They do. They do perform the best. Um, and you know what? My, um, my, uh, the funny thing is that day that I took off of posting actually boosted my posting. Um, actually boosted my, uh, Let's do Curse of Silence. Let's do... What do they like to do? Is that, he's he's going to run Alrune, so let's do... Um, let's do Fading Hope. No attack. Uh, is there going to be a card opening stream for Crimson Vow? There will. It will be Thursday afternoon, probably about 1 or 2. Um, there will be a massive pack opening. I'm going to try to get to 100. I don't know... If I'm going to get there, we're going to do a review probably Tuesday night for Wednesday's stream. Um, for Wednesday's thing, I should have done expresses. That would have been good, too. I just need a red mana to hit that uh, egg. Well, I can even blast them out of the air with Thundering Review, so... We all right there, guy? You all right? Um, brain sore. How you doing? Candiest. Uh, welcome anybody who's a bot. Uh, you're more than welcome if you're a bot. Um, even if you're not a bot. I think I'm, I'm probably only going to get to about 80. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get to 100. I might buy the rest of the 100. I have 80 right now. I'm maybe 90 plus. If I can get to 90 plus, that, that'd that be good. Um, but I do have some leftover gems, so maybe we'll throw a few more on top. Don't forget you're going to get a code for three more. So whatever you're thinking you're going to get, you're going to get three more. And guys, if you haven't been saving your gold yet, well, I don't know what to tell you, my guy. You haven't been saving your gold. Um, well, uh, Raven, to answer your question, it's not growth because it's my core viewers that are watching it, but it does spread it out. So I'm probably going to do Black Week. Um, do I reckon Phyrexian Praetors will show up? Aren't, aren't they already here? I think Phyrexian Praetors would like to tell you Phyrexian Praetors never left. Uh, let's see, is he going to get a counterspell here? He may. Yeah, I might do another Black Week. I might do Mono Black, Rakdos, Golgari, Demir, and then hit uh, and then Orzov. Oh, Black Christmas, not a bad idea. Or how about Black Friday? Um, gain two life. So that's going to be three and two and one, which is going to be 17, which is what I'm going to hit him with. Um, he's waiting. He's waiting. There we go. It would be really great if I could get a red mana. It's five by zero. Okay. stream yeah I wish not only is this guy playing on meta garbage he's being really slow and boring um, which is horrible this is the worst this is even a worse sin 
It's a sin of a solar empire. You, know, you guys remember that game? Jawara Disruption. Oh, how fast did I call that, guys? How fast did I call Jawara Disruption? Right on, right on trigger, man. Right on trigger. Unfortunately, I called Kirk Fading Hope, but he's not playing it, so. Um, and uh, the Shuffler here in 12 cards hasn't given me a red mana, which means I could have blasted Thundering Rebuke way back when he had no mana. Um, I swear to God, I, I feel like the Shuffler favors these decks. It's it's the damnedest thing. If I would have had one red mana, I'd been able to blast that immediately, immediately blast uh, Ashmouth. He wouldn't have Ashmouth, but um, it's, uh, there's the red that I needed. Do Ashmouth. He's got a uh, counterspell. Probably negate. How good, you guys, how good am I, bro? How good am I? How good am I, man? This is this is not this is not hard to figure out, folks. This is not hard to figure out. It's, just, it's the same deck all, all, every every time. It's not it's not any different ever. Uh, it's the same damn thing every time. And, okay, that one made it. And he's going to hit Al Runes. Yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't got Al Runes yet. I can't, I, I mean, I'm basically playing a computer, dude. i pretty much just playing a computer. Um... Because it's it's you can just you just know immediately what is gonna be played and what isn't. He might want to counter that one. He's not gonna counter that one. Okay. Uh. He hasn't got an owl runes yet, and he hasn't got a fading hope. There it is. Take action. Get to draw a card. It's one of those. He actually messed up his Hall of Storm Giants. He actually did it incorrectly. Um, which means that you can play this deck poorly and still win. That's how powerful it is. Let's see if he gets. Let's see if he gets the counter. Nope. What about this time? What do we got? There it is. Memory deluge. Okay, memory deluge. I'm surprised he hasn't got his owl runes yet. The, this guy literally, I, I have a feeling this guy looked up best Magic the Gathering deck and then just hit copy and paste. Because he's not even playing this well and he's not even doing that good of a job. Um, and now we can bring back another Righteous Valkyrie. Yes, take action. And that will trigger four more. Smoldering Egg, okay. Thundering Rebuke, okay. Divide by zero. Strong card. He hasn't got his Al Runes yet, man. Has not got his Al Runes yet. And for 13, he's, he's... And that's the weird thing. He's kind of struggling with me right now. There's another Smoldering Egg, so I gotta hit Remove him when I'm drawing mana. Curse of Shaken Faith will help. Um, I 
He's looted a fair amount, too. He's out of counters until next turn. Yeah. Um, I mean, the fact that we're even with life and that he's played twenty, he's played 22 cards to my 18 uh, is... I think he doesn't even know that he has an Investigate token right there, either. There's Memory Deluge again. They'll become... They'll become foxes here, whatever those are. Foxes? Are they foxes? Um, I gotta block one of them, unfortunately. Because uh, I don't trust that he's not gonna cast burn spells. Uh, my Venerable Warslingers are going to throw a lot of life back at me, as long as he doesn't pop them. Um, another gold span. Okay, so do Curse of Shaken Faith. Um, Curse of Silence is going to be... Albums? I mean, I don't think it matters at this point, because I think he's got me dead to rights now. He had that extra... He had that extra gold span. Um, we're going to hit Righteous Valkyrie right back. Take action. Yeah, he's got me there. Smoldering Egg. Oh, man, he's got all his... He got every single Smoldering Egg in the game out. He got every single Smoldering Egg in the game out. It... He should not have struggled with me this much, man. Hey, what's up, Pattyway? He really should not have struggled me with this that much. I, I don't know what happened there. He was on the struggle bus for a while, man. Uh, that, that deck should have fucking annihilated me, so... Narkill, uh... I don't know, my guy. Uh, need to get your weight up, man. That deck ain't always gonna carry you. It ain't always going to carry. It ain't always going to be there. Everyone's saying they have to ban Al runes. Um Because of that... Did you see that Mystic Dragon? That whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you get a, 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 a dragon, an illusion dragon, equal to the casting cost of the thing? Oh my god, bro. Come on, man. You kidding me with that? Get an illusory dragon for the casting cost. Come on, man. Seriously? What's up, Steely Dan? Yeah, there's Alchemist Regret or Alchemist Gambit. And then there's the one, there's the there's the Mystic Dragon. That's going to ruin everything. What's it called? Mist... Mist... I can't remember what it's called. Mist Veil Dragon? Um... I wouldn't even say it's a new Shark Typhoon. Um, I can't even remember what it's called. I forgot to add Man Lands into this, so let's add some Man Lands in. Uh, let's do that. Okay, the Frost Dragon and Bugbear. Okay. Maniform Hellkite, yeah. I don't know what they're thinking with Maniform Hellkite and, uh, um, wow, that's a mulligan right there. Thank you for the one, one mana, but no thank you. I could actually run that. I could actually run this. I don't actually need two faithful absences. Um. Yeah, Maniform Hellkite is, uh, whenever you cast a spell, you create a reflection, an illusionary dragon. It's, it's terrible. Drank. What's up, Paddywhack? I'm gonna drink it. Stay hydrated, boys. That's all I want you to do is stay hydrated. If you, if, if there's one thing that you guys need to do out there is stay hydrated. Still haven't got the sponsorship offer for, uh, uh, whatchamacallit. Dragons, Daggers games. Valky got a lies. 
Oh, well, he's going to take my Righteous Valkyrie, but I'm going to immediately pop it. Or he might take my Venerable Warslinger. I don't know. I'm just going to... No, he's got to take it. I'm just going to pop it. It doesn't matter. And the thing is, it not only... It, the, the dragon go, doesn't go away till the next end step. Meaning that it stays. You can owl runes. You can... And you'll get the dragon. And then... Not only are you going to owl runes for the dragon. Um, you will get a dragon. Next turn you can cast another owl runes and get another dragon. Because it's not going away until this end step, and then you can attack with both dragons and all the all the uh, little uh, attackers, all the little ravens. So they thought that that was a really good idea to do. They said, "Yes, we like this. This is good. This is good and wholesome, and this will help." Um, I I I don't know, man. I, they they can't they can't run. The standard's going to be completely effed if they if they if they keep out runs in, man. Um, Tanuki, you should be happy, man, because that's like a mega red card. That's like an ultra red. Ultra red. Dragon burn deck incoming, absolutely. No, it's the next end step, not the coming end step. It's the next end step. So not this end step, but the one after the next end step. And if you have Al runes, it won't go off until the one after your Al runes triggered. So you can technically get two of them out on the board. So you can attack with the dragon, the two illusions, and the ravens. You can do all of them. Skull. Is it is it the this end step or is it the next end step? I don't know, man. That to me it sounds like it's gonna be the next end step. But maybe I'm wrong. Been wrong before, it has happened. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Either way, it, it's bad. Can we just agree on that? That it sucks and is terrible? It's it's awful for the uh for the meta right now. Can we just agree on that, folks?
Oh, that was laggy. Card hungry. Card hungry. Card hungry. This Rakdos, this is a slow Rakdos player. I think we found the only slow Rakdos player in the world. Generally, it's Azorius and Esper players that are slow. Um, and of course, naturally, uh, you can't ever tell with the effusive um, Demir play. Not Demir, but the effusive... Um, uh, oh, I forgot the name of my arch enemy. Simic, there you go. Simic players. Well, my brain is not working tonight, guys. Um, sure, the cake and faith. Earth of Dakin Bath. Alright, let's do that. Alright, let's do this. He's gonna take the five. Rakdos players usually, it's like a slow mono red player. Can you confirm? We have our mono red expert here, Tanuks. Um, uh, mono red players generally play pretty quickly. I mean, it's built in, you know. It's built right into what what they're about. I think. See if he's got something. No. Okay. All right. Mono red players got shit to do. <laughs> That's pretty good, man. That's pretty funny. All right. Curse of shaken faith. Mono red players, they'll scoop after round three. Uh. If they don't see it bending their way, they're like, nope, didn't get my mana base, bye. They'll just they'll just get the hell out of there. Yeah, you know. Uh yeah, you know, like you said. Oh, look at that. Return target creature card from the graveyard to the battlefield. Three or less. You got eye twitch or shambling ghast. Alright. Nice. Um So let's swing. That's five, that's seven, yeah. That's gonna be one. Wanna see a cool trick, guys? Oh, oh. Uh-oh. Should have double blocked me. Well, I think this Rakdos player has just learned an important life lesson. Double block the Tramplers, guys. Don't let it through. I'm telling you, man. You can't gamble. You can't gamble with me, man. Rolled the dice. He had he had the he had the technology, man. He was just being he's just being silly. Make a note. He, I teach life lessons on this. It's a holistic approach to magic. We teach everything about magic. Don't like when you're at three. I've got a curse of shaken faith on the board, which means that if you cast two spells, you're gonna take two damage. There's three coming in. Don't let the damage through, guy. You're almost at the finish line. You're about to clutch it. Don't make that mistake. Stop it. Get some help. Uh, the Michael Jordan PSA. Classic. Um, I'm not old. You're old. Um, the word of the day is going to be... Hmm. Fuego. We're going to do uh, Fuego for the word of the day today. I don't know why. It's not really a Fuego deck, but Fuego sure helped us tonight. 
Um, this Boros, I am happy. This Boros held its own tonight, and I think that that is about as good as we're going to get with Boros in the meta. It, it, it stood fast and was strong and stalwart, and I like that. So I'm going to give it a solid B, solid B performance. Above average, not great, not S tier, not even A tier, but B. Could use a little bit of fine tuning, but I really like it. And I was really wanted to get back into a Boros because everyone always tells me, "Why do you play Boros?" Um, so if you did like it, leave a, hit the like button. I've been Jay Villain, and you've been great. Adios, everybody. Bye bye.